It's the story in all of the papers this morning. Marcus Rashford is meeting with Manchester United officials after missing training after a night out, apparently downing tequila in a Belfast nightclub. Um, Man United say Marcus has paid for his actions. But do we think the coverage is a bit of an overreaction, Kelly? Should this just be an in-house, in-club issue? Should we <sighs> all be fully aware of what's going on? What do you make of it all? There's been a lot of talk about it. There has, hasn't there? I mean, I've got, like, these three sections in my head. I think, firstly, from a sporting perspective, he signed up to a massive contract. And in sport, they and especially football, as you know, um, they have to be at training. It's, it's like, even if you have just fallen, broken your leg, you will be at training, whether that's in the doctors or the physio, you will still have to turn up. So there's a responsibility from a contractual point of view, absolutely should be there. But that's then a club situation. Mm -hmm. The club's got to deal with that. That's not our right to then vilify, um, to say that he's a bad person, to speculate on why and what. That's not down to us. Mm. So I think there's that. I, I don't like the vilification of football players. I think it's awful. I think you put somebody... In our country, we seem to put somebody on a pedestal very quickly, and he done a huge amount of charity work. I mean, he yeah. is <coughs> incredible. <laughs> you know what I mean? He's absolutely incredible, and he, you can see he has such a, a kind soul. And yet now we vilify him for not turning up to training. Now, it hasn't affected us personally. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's affected the club and the position of the club. So, for me, I, yeah. you know, it's that. Well, you get to the point where you're like, well, what do people want? Because mm. I, I do agree he's let down a team, he has to be held to account. Mm. But it seems like he has been. You know, he's had to miss some games, he's probably going to get fined, he's apologised. Mm. But, you know, I've seen a, a front cover of a tabloid newspaper that has two pictures of him, one where they've painted him red and put Saint or sinner over the top of his pictures you know if his family are christians <laughs> comparing him to satan like that is so extreme and like you said he's put himself out there for the free school meals he's done some amazing work and unfortunately british culture is we love to build somebody up put them on a pedestal mm. and then we love to revel in their demise and yeah. tear them right back down mm. and i think what you'll end up seeing is people like Mar marcus rashford won't put themselves out there they'll stay private mm. they won't help charities because it's not worth it and, you know, I just think it's very toxic and that whole be kind thing quickly gets forgotten. Yeah. yeah. Um, first of all, we, no one fully knows the reasons behind any of this, do we? It's, it's a lot of speculation and only Marcus knows the true story and indeed hopefully now the club. And like you say, it's an in-club in issue to yeah. be dealt with. Um, I don't know, I'd, I'd like to be asking Man United fans maybe how they feel. You know, when, as a passionate fan of a club, you want to win and you want your best players on the pitch. So if you're thinking, OK, you're going to miss a game because of this, I wonder how they feel. Yeah. But that's that's football. It is all-encompassing. Mm. And unfortunately, no matter... And he, he's young. He's in his mid-20s. He's, he's, he's a he's young guy. This just really reminds me of the David Beckham documentary that I saw where it became very apparent how much he was attacked by everybody, the fans, the media, you know, people in the team. It, it's, I just think, you know, the mental um, well-being is the thing that's most important. And for him to have done something like this that I, I think is probably out of character, you've got to look at the bigger picture of why rather yeah. than just ready to, to shoot him down and plaster him over, over um, the papers. And, you know, I think it's, it's really nice of that lovely person, that lovely waitress that went to the papers and, and sold the story in the first place. I think, you know, it's, it, that gives me a deeper thing of you do certain things to try and damage people, literally. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, I'm just... I, I, I just think we, it's very Of course, wrong. we don't fully again know whether she sold the story or exactly what's happened, but certain people <coughs> are talking. Kept her mouth shut. People are talking. It's a good um, night partying. <laughs> Is that... Uh, it's a good night in Belfast, I party, isn't it? Well, I've been to that club. <laughs> exactly. I have no comments. That's <laughs> what I'm going to say about that. Can you take us there on the next work day? Uh, yeah. you, you might miss the next day. I'm not even going to joke about that. Yeah, it I just is. Hope there's exactly. a simple mistake. He is messed up. He's been silly. Rather than there's something worse going on with him yeah. as a person. That's have any of you ever missed a day of work and not called in? Well, I was thinking about that this morning, actually. And, and no is, is the quick answer. And yeah. certainly I would be alerting my my bosses that I wouldn't be making it for whatever reason, if, God forbid, it, one of the children's sick or something like that.
like that. So I would, yeah. you'd have to do it the right way. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I've never just gone AWOL. Because I've definitely had, you know, not so much now I'm more responsible, but when I, in my younger years, <laughs> I've definitely suddenly had food poisoning at 8.59 when I was due in at nine. <laughs> <laughs> And it was, it was when I used to wear Saturdays in a salon. It would always be Friday night food poisoning. <laughs> yeah, it took the evening just to come on, yeah, didn't it? That's yeah. nice takeaway, You yeah. woke up just not feeling very well. Yeah. <laughs> then right as a button by Monday. You know, <laughs> but it's like you say, I mean, the, the clubs are geared up for dealing with players that don't abide by the rules. And there are a lot of rules. Mm, I, yeah. I know that having lived with a, a player. Like, yeah. you have to be there on a certain time. You have to, you yeah. know, there are things that cannot be... Um, you, can, you just can't go against what the rule book says. And they get fined a lot, human. though, don't they? He shouldn't be allowed to just let his hair down. He's a young 26-year-old mm. man who's put so much time, as we've said, into helping others. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I just think it's just... But I think yes, people would of course he should have phoned up and yeah. said, I'm, I'm not, In your day I'm not off, condoning your that. Time. I'm not yeah. condoning that, but mm. sometimes people need a break. Yeah. Yeah, I yeah. think, uh, yeah. And then, if that yeah. is the case, so that is when hopefully you have to be able and willing to speak to those yeah. around you and get a, a proper conversation and dialogue going if you are feeling any of those thoughts.